One of the strangest revelations of the Industrial Revolution was the notion that there really aren't many natural forms of straight line motion. While the concept of an object moving in a perfectly straight line or rectilinear motion is a fundamental principle in physics, natural forces such as gravity, fluid dynamics, and friction almost always introduce a curve or a deviation. Controlling motion with machinery during this time period also predominantly adhered to this limitation, with circular motion being a fundamental driving element of the industrial age. This presented itself in many forms, such as the rotation of a wheel, the swing of a pendulum, or the turn of a crank. Yet for engineers and inventors of the 18th and 19th centuries, this prevalence of rotation created a frustrating challenge. In a world based on rotational movement, how could straight line motion be produced using just rigid links and pivoted joints? This is the story of the straight line mechanism, a class of mechanical linkages designed to convert angular motion into perfect or near perfect linear motion. The path to the first straight line mechanism began at the dawn of steam power in the mid 18th century with the Newcomen atmospheric engine the first true practical combustion engine. These engines were single acting. Steam was introduced into a cylinder to create a vacuum upon condensation, and the pressure of the atmosphere would then push the piston down, performing the work. This downward pull was transmitted to a large rocking overhead beam via a chain. While simple in operation, new common engines were large and incredibly inefficient in their operation. In 1764, while repairing a model Newcomen engine, Scottish inventor James Watt was struck by the tremendous waste of steam, leading to a realization that a separate condenser, where condensation could occur without repeatedly cooling the cylinder itself, would dramatically improve efficiency. This single innovation made the steam engine up to five times more fuel efficient. Despite this improvement, Watt further pursued even more power and efficiency, leading to the development of the double-acting engine. In this design improvement, steam enters both sides of the piston, alternately, allowing the piston to transmit power through both pushing and pulling, almost doubling the engine's power but also delivering that power more smoothly, making it ideal for driving rotary machinery. To transmit both pushing and pulling forces, a rigid piston rod was required. But this introduced a fundamental geometric conflict. The piston needed to move in a perfect straight line within its sealed cylinder, while the end of the rocking beam that it was connected moved in a circular arc. This became the primary obstacle standing between Watt's concept and a working double acting engine. By 1784, Watt would be issued a patent for his engine, describing within it the first practical straight line motion mechanism that was derived from the Watts linkage. A Watts linkage is composed of two long outer links of equal length pivoted to a fixed frame at a distance from each other. The moving ends of these two links are then connected by a shorter central link. As the links move, the ends of the central link are constrained to movement along a circular arc. However, because the fixed pivots are separated, these arcs curve in opposite directions. The midpoint of the central link is therefore simultaneously pulled inward by one arc and pushed outward by the other. These opposing curvatures largely cancel each other out in the center of the mechanism's travel. This path, however, is not a straight line, but a figure eight shaped curve that is a lemniscate of Bernoulli called the Watts curve. Despite being a curve, the central section of this path is remarkably flat and provides an excellent approximation of straight line motion over a considerable distance. Just as James Watt faced the geometric conflict, we often face a similar conflict today. In a world of information overload and manipulative algorithms, it can feel impossible to find the straight line, the objective truth where we're constantly being pulled by opposing narratives. Reconciling these opposing points of view to see the bigger picture is the exact reason I used Ground News. They're a website and app on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every day they pull in thousands of articles from around the world and organize them by story. They also show you the 
political bias, factuality rating, and even the ownership of each news outlet, giving you crucial context about the information you're consuming. It doesn't try to give you an unbiased source. Instead, it gives you the tools to see and understand the existing biases so you can form a more balanced and independent perspective. And as someone who loves digging into the mechanics of how things work, I really appreciate a tool that helps me understand the mechanics of how news is presented. Let me show you how it works with a real example. Take this recent story about the recent drone incursions into Poland. The first thing I see on the coverage detail is how many sources from across the political spectrum are actually reporting on this and who owns those sources. But here's where it gets powerful. When you compare the headlines, you see how differently the story is framed. Notice the difference in language. Now this source on the right presents a more hawkish tone, sensationalizing event as a drone invasion and framing Article 4 as a political alarm bell, while sources on the left frames their reporting as more of a concern of escalation, with an emphasis on NATO solidarity towards the matter. Stop getting pulled in different directions and start seeing the whole picture. To subscribe, go to ground news forward slash new mind or scan the QR code right here on the screen. You'll get 40% off the unlimited access vantage plan, the same one that I use. That link is also in my description and pinned comment below. Get a better way to stay informed at ground news forward slash new mind. Now back to the pursuit of the perfect line. While the Watts linkage was a conceptual breakthrough, it was not the final mechanism used in his engines. The motion it generated needed to be transferred from the midpoint of the Watts linkage to the piston rod itself and required more travel. To achieve this, Watt combined his linkage with a pantograph, a well-known parallelogram linkage used by draftsmen for copying and scaling drawings. This created a more complex but compact six-bar linkage called the parallel motion linkage. Watt's introduction of the parallel motion linkage did more than just solve an engineering problem. It introduced kinematic synthesis, or the process of designing a mechanism to achieve a specific desired motion to the Industrial Revolution. Over the next century, a multitude of straight-line mechanisms would emerge, with some being purely academic in nature, while others becoming critical elements of machinery and vehicle designs. The first evolution of these mechanisms are variants of the Watts linkage configuration known as four-bar linkages. The Chebyshev linkage, invented by Russian mathematician Pafnadi Chebyshev, is a four-bar linkage with a key distinction from Watt's linkage is that the linear motion produced is parallel to the line connecting its two fixed points. Chebyshev linkages became a popular choice for heavy lifting machinery, primarily being used as the horse head design of level luffing cranes. Variations of a linkage that have the same input-output relationship while being dimensionally dissimilar are common and are known as cognate linkages with the Chebyshev lambda linkage being one such example of this. In modern applications, Chebyshev linkages and its cognates are common to robotics as their path of motion emulates walking, particularly when linked as a kinematic system. The Hoken linkage is another contemporary cognate of the Chebyshev linkage that was developed by Carl Hoken in 1926. It's characterized by its higher quality approximate straight line that maintains a nearly constant velocity for a significant portion of its linear travel. This property is highly desirable in applications like conveyor systems or intermittent pushers in manufacturing environments. The Roberts linkage, developed by Welsh pattern maker Richard Roberts, is another four-bar linkage that specifically addresses the needs of machine tools and manufacturing with a symmetrical design. Much like the Watts linkage, other linkages were designed specifically to address engine designs. The Grasshopper linkage, patented by Oliver Evans in 1801 for example, was the foundational element of the Grasshopper beam engine. Designed as a modification of the Scott Russell mechanism, a sliding linkage which translates linear motion through a right angle, the Grasshopper linkage replaces the slider with a very long swinging link. The link moves in a circular arc, but because the radius of the arc is so large, a small segment of its path is nearly indistinguishable from a straight line. For decades after Watt's patent, the search for a perfect straight line mechanism continued. The various four-bar linkages, while clever, were all fundamentally limited. It was eventually understood as a core tenet of kinematics that it is impossible to generate a perfectly straight line using a four-bar linkage composed solely of revolute joints. Achieving a true straight line would require a more complex arrangement of links or a leap into another dimension. 
The first person to achieve this perfect straight line motion was the French mathematician Pierre Frédéric Sars. In 1853, he invented a mechanism that produced a mathematically exact straight line using a linkage that operated in three dimensions. Categorized as a spatial linkage, it consists of two parallel plates connected by a series of hinged links. In its simplest form, it uses four links arranged in two perpendicular piers. As the plates are moved towards or away from each other, the geometry of the hinge constrains one plate to move in a perfect linear path relative to the other. This configuration also had the advantage of being able to achieve relatively large ranges of linear motion. Despite solving straight line motion, the SARS linkage went largely unnoticed, primarily due to the majority of engineering challenges of the era being guided by the kinematics of machines, which were fundamentally planar problems. A three-dimensional solution, while theoretically sound, was likely perceived as overly complex to manufacture and integrate into these two-dimensional systems. Within a decade, a solution to the planar straight line problem would emerge from two mines independently across Europe. The first was Charles Nicolas Pasillier, a French army officer and a graduate of the prestigious École Polytechnique, who first conceptualized the linkage in a letter in 1864 and eventually within a formal paper in 1873. The second was Yom Tov Lipman Lipkin, a Lithuanian Jewish mathematician who had independently discovered the same mechanism and published a detailed paper in 1870. Both solutions were based on the concept of geometric inversion. Geometric inversion is a transformation that maps points in a plane to other points in the plane with respect to a fixed circle known as the circle of inversion. For example, given a circle of inversion with its center at a point O and a radius of R, for any point P in the plane, its inverse point P prime lies on the line that extends from O through P. The product of their distances from the center O is a constant value equal to the radius squared. Inversion has many fascinating properties, but in the context of linkages, if a circle passes through the center of inversion O, its inverse creates a mathematically perfect straight line. The mechanism that Pusillier and Lipkin created, known today as the pusillier lipkin linkage, employs the principle of inversion using a system known as an inverser cell. The linkage consists of seven moving links and one grounding link. Its core is a rhombus of four equal length links, often called a kite. This rhombus is connected by two longer equal length links to a fixed pivot point, which serves as the center of inversion. The linkage is constructed in such a way that two of its opposing vertices are always geometric inverses of each other with respect to the fixed pivot. By then adding one final link to constraint kite movement to a circular path that passes through the center of inversion, the linkage mechanically forces its inverse point to trace out a perfect straight line. The inverser cell linkage concept was revolutionary at the time as it shifted Industrial Revolution era engineering from practical intuition to a solution formed purely by abstract mathematical proof. Shortly after the introduction of the pocellier lipkin linkage, new inverser cell configurations would emerge as mathematicians and engineers sought to refine the concept. Just a year after Pocellier's full publication, British mathematician Harry Hart introduced two elegant and simpler solutions. His first inverser, also known as the Hart's W frame or anti parallelogram linkage, achieved perfect linear motion with only six bars using an anti parallelogram instead of a kite and rhombus structure. His second design was the Hart's A frame, a less dimensionally flexible six bar linkage that had the advantage of possessing linear motion that perpendicularly bisects the line between its fixed base points. In 1875, English mathematician Alfred Kemp devised Kemp's double kite inversers, which uses a cell containing two similar kites to generate a straight line. Working with J.J. Sylvester, Kemp also developed the quadruplanar inverser 
a more versatile generalization of Hart's anti-parallelogram linkage that allowed the pivot points to be displaced from the sides of the links. The period also saw the creation of other unique designs. The parallax inverser is another multi-bar mechanism that also operates on the principle of geometric inversion. It consists of a fixed center point, an input point, and an output point, constrained by the relationship of the product of the distances from a fixed center to an input point and output point remaining constant. The Brickard inverser is another exact straight line mechanism notable for its two exact straight line outputs at right angles to each other without requiring a sliding guide. Ironically, despite the breakthroughs in straight line motion during the 1870s, new manufacturing techniques like the planer and the milling machine were becoming widespread. These machines made it far easier to produce straight flat surfaces and guides. A simple sliding joint could now provide the linear motion that had once required a complex linkage. By the turn of the 20th century, straight line mechanisms would find a new broad reaching purpose within automotive suspensions. One of the first applications was for solid axle control. In a solid rear axle, the suspension must allow the axle to move vertically to absorb bumps while simultaneously preventing any lateral motion. The Panhard rod is a popular simple solution for axle control. However, it forces the axle to move in a slight arc as the suspension compresses and extends, shifting the axle sideways. When the watts linkage is applied in this application, with two horizontal links mounted to the chassis, connected by a central vertical link, the axle is constrained to almost perfect vertical travel. Beyond the direct application of watts linkage, modern independent suspension systems produce precise control over a wheel's motion, representing a multi-dimensional evolution of the original straight line problem, using complex linkages to achieve an ideal, though not perfectly linear, travel path. Today's straight line mechanisms have found a new focus within robotics and within MEMS devices, where they form the basis of compliant mechanisms. This shift allows for the creation of single piece, flexible devices that provide the frictionless, high precision motion crucial for applications ranging from robotic surgery and aerospace to micro scale manipulation. Look at my new straight line mechanism. Neat. What's it do? When I pull on the lever here, this happens. Huh, that's weird. Actually, I'm sort of cheating. My straight line is curved and 24,000 miles long. 